the tools have agents with knowledge gaps and you know with knowledge and sometimes you build tools saying okay when you get when you're handling a particular interaction your system is going to go and pick up information from these knowledge systems to provide the data what you need uh, with ai capabilities you know they're able to kind of you know really guide the agent so it doesn't matter what the agent experiences your onboarding time is a lot shorter because ai is literally guiding you uh, through the interaction to provide you the information what you need Hey everyone, I'm Brett Kinsella, founder of VoiceBot.ai, and today we're going to be talking about conversational AI in a customer service application beyond the chatbot. And for our discussion today, we have an, our esteemed guest, Vijay Shankar. Vijay, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Brett. Thanks for the opportunity to have this conversation. Well, I'm excited to have you here today. I think it's a really interesting time to have this discussion because let's face it, conversational AI has been around for a long time. The chatbots in particular have been around for quite a while and they've gotten a lot better over the last few years. We've all seen very effective implementations of this technology and we've seen very ineffective implementations of this technology. But when you and I were chatting, I thought there was an interesting topic that we should share and to maybe expand on this discussion a little bit, because I'm really on this kick right now where I want people to know more about what's happening in this space and be able to define the boundaries a little bit better about how the use cases actually play out. And so today, what we're going to be talking about, I believe, is conversational AI in the contact center beyond the chatbot. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this? So Unifor, how did you come to this conclusion and how did you extend your product set to get there? Great. Um, that, that's a great uh, segue into the intro. Um, so I'll take a step back to answer your question. Um, so when you look historically at the contact centers and their focus on improving the customer experience, uh, most of the evolution, most of the transformation has actually been focused on the self-service side of things. So you know, let's tell, I, mean, I don't want to age myself or date myself, but uh, back a couple of decades back when I first was in the contact center, uh, the evolution was in the form of the IBRs or interactive voice response, what is called, where they're evolving it from basic DTMF, which is, you know, I think it's called dual tone multi-touch frequency or something to that effect. I forgot about what it is. Really trying to empower the agents to press one, press two to get through your self-service attractions. Then obviously there was enhan enhancements made with speech. And it was more directed dialogue where they used to say, instead of, you know, say one to know your account balance or press one to, uh, to, to know your account balance. There's more directed dialogue in terms of uh, what they wanted you to do. Again, the emphasis was companies wanted to empower the customers uh, really to handle some of the interactions by themselves rather than wait in line and ha have those basic interactions with the agent. And also, it also saved the company's cost because you had fewer calls going into the agent and really, you know, you're trying to empower them to do a lot of things by themselves. Obviously, speech evolved. Uh, we had uh, the natural language capabilities getting enhanced. So from directed dialogue, it became more natural language, like you and I speaking right now for the IBR to understand and then complete the tasks. It also helped improve the self-service rates, which is what companies factor. And obviously, with the advent of AI in the last decade, you now have what's called conversational AI across devices and channels. So you might hear different words like, you know, intelligent virtual assistants or chatbots or voice bots or whatever the terminologies they want to use. But again, the macro point I want to talk over here is that all of this evolution was in the self-service side, uh, really looking to drive self-service automation rates, uh, really looking to empower the customers and also lower the cost of uh, customer service transactions. And, it, and as you said, it's gotten better. I mean, I've, I've had great uh, self-service experiences when I interact as a consumer. I uh, was able to solve a lot of problems myself. But there are many a time where I absolutely want to speak to somebody. I need to speak to an agent because, you know, whether I, we just talked about if you have a fraud alert on your card or if you want to solve, uh, you know, the air conditioning, the water heater in your house, uh, likelihood is that you're not going to go through a a self-service channel and wait to see and how I can solve the water heater in my house. You'd want to speak to somebody right away, get in touch with somebody right away, and then make sure that that, uh, that particular problem is taken care of. So what happens in these circumstances is that, um, you know, when customers, when consumers like me actually end up speaking to an agent, 
you're still stuck with the back old, you know, archaic technologies, what agents are using. And, you know, they're asking you, why are you calling? Uh, what's your last four social security number? What's the zip code? And all those standard questions which have already been addressed by the self-service channels. So I think there is a huge opportunity for contact centers to really look to enhance the end-to-end -end experience and the conversational AI, if you extend it beyond chatbots into the agents, can really help help you achieve that objective. So that's okay, kind of so the let's, let, let, let's dig into that a little bit. So you've talked about this idea of self-service. It's really important to talk about the idea that that's a, there's a real benefit there of getting self-service. But I've seen all these same studies as well. In fact, I have some consumer data that shows people still want to talk to live agents. And some of that's because their chatbot experiences haven't been that great. They, but some of it's just because we're humans. We like to talk to other humans and we feel like, oh, it's, it's going to be more complex. We're going to need this to be done. And I think that's one of the gaps that we've had so far in the industry is that we have assumed that the chatbots will actually provide a great experience all the time, but then we haven't accounted for the edge cases. And so essentially, very often, they just become a new queuing mechanism for us. That's absolutely true. I mean, so I think about it as the urgency to the customer, right? As you as a consumer, if something is urgent, you want to speak to somebody right away and solve the problem. You're not going to go through a chatbot or an, or an or a IVR or an IVA to, to go through a series of questions. You want to get to the person quickly, solve the problem. I had to make a call yesterday to my home security company. I mean, I, I, mean, I tried to schedule that appointment on the chatbot. The, the chatbot didn't allow me to schedule something. So I actually had to call in and wait for some time and then go through my verification process. And it was like a simple call to send somebody over who's coming in today Whereas it just took forever to get to the basic conversation because the chatbot is not good enough to solve my problem. Right. Uh, so I wanted to be self-served, but I couldn't self-serve. So you're absolutely right. So there is a huge opportunity. We like to speak to people. And when we speak to people, if you can actually empower that experience even more while empowering the agent to know who I am, why am I calling, so, they can, so that they can be quick to the point, handle my interaction quickly, is actually an end much better for the customer experience as a whole. All right. So now that's the handover process, right? That's right? But we've been talking about something that goes beyond that. And then the question is, once you have the live agent, what tools do they have at their disposal? And can the same technology be applied in order to make that a better experience for the agent delivering to the customer once the connection has been made? That's a great question. So when you apply conversational AI across your entire customer age, customer journey, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't matter if they are self-serving themselves or speaking to an agent. If you apply the conversational AI across both, then the handoff would be smoother. For example, I could serve, like for my example yesterday, right? I could have done a basic set of interactions with my chatbot, like, you know, they could, I could have verified who I am, my passcode and everything else. And then they said, oh, well, no, you, you can't schedule an appointment online. You need to call, here's a number to call. I click on that, I speak to the agent, my entire context is transferred over to the agent. So the agent can be empowered saying, okay, this is Vijay, he's calling regarding a scheduling of a technician and empower the agent with the real step-by-step -step guidance. So in essence, what's happening is uh, agent is getting my, my information, they're getting my intent of the call, they're possibly getting my sentiment based on how I'm speaking, and they're also getting my emotion if I'm really frustrated or am I just in a much more casual mode. So they're able to guide me step by step and it empowers them to be a little bit more engaged and also make sure that the call is short and to the point and the experience of the customer is a lot better. So really the use, the first use case I'm talking about is applying conversational AI technology for the agents to empower the agents to, to really have real-time guidance or real-time coaching or whatever, we, or sometimes people call it next best action to help you know the better customer interaction. So one of the things that I think about here is the you've got that handover, you've got all this context you've, you've done, but then there's a wide variety in the experience, skill, and capability of that agent. Mm -hmm. They might all have the same tools, but a lot of them have more institutional knowledge, more experience. And so then the question is, how does the system help them throughout the conversation as they're talking live? Because most of the chatbot solutions hand over and they're gone. Um, and in this case, there's an opportunity there to have the system listen and maybe fill in some of the knowledge gaps that the agent might have. That's a great question you bring up because 
what happens is the tools have agents with knowledge gaps and you know with knowledge and sometimes you build tools saying okay when you get when you're handling a particular interaction your system is going to go and pick up information from these knowledge systems to provide the data what you need uh, with ai capabilities you know they're able to kind of you know really guide the agent so it doesn't matter what the agent experiences your onboarding time is a lot shorter because ai is literally guiding you uh, through the interaction to provide you the information what you need now there is a next level of advancements uh, with uh, with so with the knowledge piece so I, the first part i talked about the ai just guiding the agent you know so that thereby even if you are a new agent you can onboard much faster the second piece what i want to talk about is on the knowledge piece so we talked about knowledge systems being created now we all know after we create a knowledge system to update it on a regular basis uh, requires time and requires manual intervention now if you're updating your interactions with customers and have this learning capabilities and are saying okay this particular question the right answer is this and you're putting it somewhere else and but not are really updating the knowledge base the knowledge base loses its its usefulness over the course of time it just becomes a generic faq and here is where ai can actually even get even better because now ai can actually drive the interactions across you know by basically capturing the knowledge information from disparate systems and then updating the base automatically so thereby the agents have the most useful information well so vj you know this is a really important point about this idea of being able to not only provide better service but to actually reduce the ramp up time of your agents because we all know the agent turnover is a big big problem so in our last minute here maybe you could just give us a perspective of how what you're doing now with Unifor moves beyond that chatbot and really this agent assistant and the impact that it can have. That's a great question. Um, I really want to talk about you know this is a critical topic, right? If we really want to empower agents from to drive the better experience altogether, um, and we really want to empower agents to ensure that they don't feel the burnout. Right now, agents are really facing the you know the stress of customers calling and yelling at them all the time, and not being able to provide them the information. Um, so with what I talked about so far, you know, the real time guidance, providing the agents the right information at the right time based on who the customer is, why they're calling, uh, you're less likely to have the customer yell at you saying, oh, you don't even know why I'm calling in the first place. So they're less likely to get better. They're more likely to get better in terms of the onboarding. And they're more likely to actually augment their own engagement because they're actually having systems telling them what to do. And they can be much more conversational with the customer like you and I are doing. So in essence, what I believe is that a better agent experience will drive a better customer experience. A better agent engagement will drive a much better customer experience and artificial intelligence and those technologies can really help with that. Yeah, and I think we're just scratching the surface, surface with these conversational AI technologies. And I think this is a really great example of it where we start out with the self-service, we move into this idea of a, of a tool that assists, you know, the virtual assistant mm -hmm. uh, for the... Uh, for the agent or the contact center representative so that they can provide not only a better experience for the customer, but also a better experience for themselves. They can feel more fulfilled in their work and maybe you won't have as much turnover. You have faster ramp up time. So there's a lot of discussion around conversational AI about what it can do, but there's so many new use cases that are coming all, up all the time. And this is a great example. So VJ, how can people find out more about Unifor? Yeah, so you, people can find out more about Unifor visiting our website, uh, www.unifor, which is U-N-I-P-H-O-R-E.com. Uh, we offer a conversational AI and automation platform uh, to drive, uh, be, to basically unlock the value of every enterprise conversation, whether it's a customer to an IBA conversation or a customer to an agent conversation and whatnot. So we provide those insights and those automa automation capabilities. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot for joining me today. Thanks, Brett. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me over.